so I kept waiting for the lights, but they didn't in, so... Uh, hey, look at this. Hey, all right. So, uh, hi, my name's Matt from Gun Interactive. I have some friends here. We're going to do a quick Q&A with you guys, if you guys are into that. I'd like to introduce first the creative director from Gun Interactive, Mr. Ronnie Hobbs. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, coming up next, we've got somebody that you all recognize, Mr. Kane Hobbard. Now we have the uh, motion capture artist and voice of Julie, Mrs. Scott Taylor Compton. And last but not least, we have the designer of a brand new leather face. You might have seen him. Nicotero leather face out now on all platforms. We've got Mr. Greg Nicotero.
So there you go. That's awesome. I didn't know that story. Um, for Scout, just so everyone's clear, um, she did the mocap for all of our female characters and uh, for all the female victims. And the of she was all Yes, I and so. the reason we chose Scout, obviously from her work on Halloween, she's an incredible actress, it's all around, but I remember when we were talking to Kane about trying to find someone who could believably die or believably look injured, um, we kept going back to you and Rob Zombie's Halloweens and the way that you were being chased while you were injured. And Kane and I had about 20 phone calls before we even contacted Scout trying to find someone who could pull this off. We never told you this, Scout, by the way. No, we keep going. No, we, no. we had a list of about 50 girls just from watching it. And we watched probably 100 horror films, because you know, everyone's seen them, but when you have to point out, oh, who I remember from a movie, you forget. So you have to rewatch and rewatch and rewatch. And finally, Kane called one day and said, what do you think about Scout? And I looked down at my list and I was like, yes, she's on my list. I just put her on my list as well. So both of us simultaneously uh, had you just in our mind without even talking to each other, and it was the perfect kind of fit. So yeah, I never told you that story, but um, we're glad you were on the game with us. She, we killed her hundreds of times, not only came in with a real live chainsaw without the blade, obviously. If you've never been chased by Kane with a chainsaw, I recommend it. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fun. I mean, it, it was pretty intense. Like doing that shoot. I mean, we, how, how long did we go for? Seven days? I mean, that was just one Six shoot. Days. And then we had, we had multiple shoots. And then we had three shoots. Yeah. But I mean, every time I'd be called, they're like, okay, uh, this person's gonna kill you this way, but we're gonna try three different ways to do this kill. So really, you're gonna get killed four times. Now we're gonna switch you over to this guy and kill you maybe five times. If you get it in the first take. Yeah, if right. you get it in the first Sorry, day. everything was perfect except their foot blended into your body. So, yeah. Poor, poor Scout. Um, she did a wonderful job for us. And of course, she did the voice of Julie, one of our favorite characters in the game, for those that do play. That is Julie. And um, Julie's kind of based on Scout, too, which I never really told her that. Um, so I'm glad She's a badass. She's a badass, yeah. She's a fucking badass. Yeah. yeah. She's got lots of style, you know. Um, so th that, that's how we came across Scout, and um, it was awesome to see her working. And if you're wondering about how Nicotero got on board with us, uh, Wes Keltner, our CEO, and he famously designs the butts in our game, for those who follow him online. Um, yeah. So, of course we did the Savini Jason um, on Friday 13, so this time we knew we had to do something bigger, right? Really, essentially, to us was who could make us a new Leatherface, and once again, we had another list of names, but it wasn't very long. And he was at the top of every single list that anyone had in our office, and I'm surprised you didn't have Scout do it since she was on your other list. She was number two. Yeah. She was number two. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then, um, you know, for the past, how long? A year or so, at least? We've been. Yeah. Going it, it's work. tricky because, you know, working on The Walking Dead, the first thing that I was concerned about was I didn't want it to, you know, we had these characters called the Whisperers that had skin that was made from zombies and stitched together. And they were really a really creepy villain on the show because they looked like Michael Myers and they looked like Jason. They looked like characters that had no expression. You just saw the face. And that's one of the things that's really interesting about designing these killers is the less expression on their face then the less opportunity you have to reason with it to not kill you. That's what makes it like viscerally scary. Um, so that was the first thing was like, you know, I kind of went back a little bit to some stuff that we had done on part three where it's like you actually visibly see body parts. You know, we talked a lot about just take, do we just take the skin or do we stitch elements of the skin together or do we stretch um, elements of it so that you, when you look at it from a distance, when you're doing makeup effects and things as well, you have people, when your actor's sitting in your chair and you're doing makeup on them, you're three feet away. But the camera's rarely three feet away. The camera's usually much further away. So you have to get the sense of what it's going to look like standing in a dark doorway or coming at you because that's what, that's the beginning of the suspenseful moment of, is what impression you're going to have. So that was one of the first things we really wanted to do was make sure that it had a great silhouette. You start designing the, the, the overall um, form of it and then you get into the detail later.
Yeah, I was gonna say you have some awesome drawings. <laughs> um, but can you describe the uh, Carol Leatherface? Like, well, what I was gonna say was, um, anytime you create a new character, especially somebody as important as Leatherface, you know, you go through a lot of iteration, and there's a lot of ideas that come across, and then you know, kind of tuning them. And, you know, you think of it like a, the rock in a tumbler, and it eventually turns into a, a, a very pretty stone. Um, one of the first drawings that I had seen had the mouth. And everybody universally a gun. There's a a face that makes up part of the terror leather face where the open mouth is like mid scream in death. And that's what makes up one of the eye holes on the terror leather face. And the minute that drawing came over, everybody in the office was like, Well, one hundred percent that stays. That's never going anywhere. That's gotta be there. So Props on that. Yeah, Wes, yeah, I remember Wes called a meeting. Get in here, get in the conference room quick. Get in the conference room quick. Like, what's the problem? We thought something's on fire, right? He's like, look what he did. Look at this. And it's a giant face screaming from the mouth hole on this side. So if you haven't seen the Tail Leather Face, uh, you should check it out and look it up. Yeah, we should make a mask of it. Yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> All right, I'll get on that. I agree. That yeah. Was like the second right we discussed. We were like, now we need a real one, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but people don't realize what it takes. So, so when the guys reached out to me. You know, I have an artist that I work with at KB named Mike Broom, and we're really good at sort of bouncing ideas off of each other. And I say, try this, try this. You know, he's been one of the key designers at, at my studio for years. But it's not just the face. Then they're like, okay, what's the stitching look like? What does the hair look like? Is there hair punched in the face? And then we got the face right, and I was like, okay, guys, this has been great. And they're like, no, wait, what about the body? I'm like, what? I'm like, well, yeah, what, what's, what's his body size, and what kind of shirt does he have on? I'm like, I don't know. I just know what the face looks like. So it was like, it was much more of an all-encompassing design phase, because you're not just, you know, traditionally, if you're dealing with, like, a makeup effects character, you design the face. But then it was like, you know, how far his sleeves rolled up, how much blood is splattered on his clothes. So it was much more like producing a TV show, like Creep Show or Walking Dead, where you have to like think about all the elements. Um, and then the people that have to bring it to life, the artists, you know, the renderings that the guys did was great. I, I went up to Lexington and toured the facility and was just blown away by everything. I mean, it's, it's just, the realism is it's pretty disturbing. Yeah, then we got to get the chainsaw. Killed you figure out a hundred times. Yeah, I saw the chainsaw. chainsaw. Brand new chainsaw, um, so that it's not the cool one. Well, yeah. hold on, not brand new. Well, it's yeah. new to us. <laughs> it's a Leatherface chainsaw. It's a 1950s David Bradley chainsaw. It's just the meanest looking thing. Yeah. So when we were, again, you know, the early designs were masked and then, you know, all through the clothes and all of that, he needed a saw that matched that. And Wes Keltner, our CEO over at Gun, picked out this saw. It's Nothing, it looks like a tractor with a kill you bit on the end of it, you know. And um, yeah, it's yeah, the nastiest saw. I can't believe it's a real saw. Yeah, there's a, there's a version of it that has two bars and two chains, uh, it's unreal, yeah. but yeah, so a saw befitting, um, you know, and I'm not just saying this because we're sitting here with them, but you know, next to the original, my favorite Leatherface version, uh, to date is Nicotero Leatherface. So, yeah, saw that lives up to that hype. And, that 1950s David Bradley did the trick. Um, just so we, you're clear, we normally have a laptop and we show lots of things, but what we didn't want to do is bore you with trailers and behind the scenes footage when we have these three legends up here. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to allow more time for you all to ask questions about the game and or maybe a question you have uh, just for these three individually that you've been wanting to ask them. Um, so you want to I think go? We're about ready for that. We have some yeah. microphones in the aisles. And, and the lights microphone. are pretty bright for us. So we catch, you can't see. Anything. Yeah. yeah, can we like, even maybe turn the light, what do you think, turn the lights on? Or? So that's good. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, because we can't see. I see two boobs of lights. <laughs> there's two boobs. Right there. See, I thought it was two UFO aliens. <laughs> yeah, Scott says boobs. No, there's something wrong with this. I sh it should be the other way around, by the way. <laughs> I can't it, it, it feels like headlights on a highway. It, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's the Well, okay. Well, that's no shot. <laughs> <laughs> that's right in line with your normal thinking. So. <laughs> So the lights didn't change. So we'll no. just. Okay. It's probably not a light person but just waiting to touch. Now it's four boobs. <laughs> Maybe it's, oh, it's close encounters. Can the other lights come on? Maybe that will. If, if someone can find a light switch, just hit it. I think it's left. 
Do these switches say If somebody has a chainsaw, chop those lights down. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, every time I hear the word lights, I look at them though, and then I have that blind. Yeah. yeah, that's happening to me right now. <laughs> so I, I do want to say one other thing. Interestingly enough, about about what these two gentlemen do. If there was ever a trivia game, everything you need to know about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, my money would go on these guys. Like they, they have to do a deep dive. Like they know like what kinds of coffee cans are in the cabinet in the set of the original movie. Like you guys should talk a little bit about that because that really that really impressed I mean, me that you guys have to the level of detail in recreating the original locations and the original sets really kind of blew me away. So I think that's something that I would like to hear for. Before Ronnie takes over here, though, I will say yeah. that at Gun, one of the things that is, is really important to us is there's a lot of horror games out there, and they're, they're great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything negative about anything. They're awesome. But they kind of exist in a game world where you jump in and you know this is the game. And, and at Gun, our goal is always to make sure that when you jump into Friday the 13th, you feel like you're at Crystal Lake. If you jump into Texas Chainsaw, you feel like you're at the gas station, you're at the family house, you're at those locations, you're in that moment. Because as much as we're making multiplayer games, our goal is always to make cinematic moments for you guys to experience. That's the interactive and gun interactive. That's what we do. That's why a Texas Chainsaw, you know, that's, that's why these games matter. In my mind, in Gun's mind, it's one of our core principles. So if you're gonna really get lost in an experience that feels like you're playing in a movie with your friends, it needs to look the part. And with that comes years and years and years of studying. Four years, you know, if we go back to the beginning, we were watching Texas Chainsaw. We went and did a reference trip, and then I'll shut up, I apologize. We went and did a reference photography and photogrammetry trip, which I won't bore you with the details of that because I'm a photographer, but Basically, if you said, take a picture of every inch of your hometown so you can recreate it in the world. That means all the clovers that are growing, the weeds, the flowers, the birds, the clouds, the trees, and on and on and on, and then the locations. And when we did that, we were out in uh, Lockhart, Texas, was home base for us for about a week to 10 days. And we sat there multiple nights running over the Blu-ray of Texas and pausing frame by frame by frame and bickering, arguing, to the point of shouting and raising our voices over, no, that's more navy blue, not royal blue. <laughs> that, that goes into what we do at Gun. It's something we take a lot of pride in. Yeah. Okay, this is, okay, this is like my first introduction to video game making, and I was shocked by how long it takes and how intricate it is. What was like the hardest part of creating this game for you guys? I mean, as Matt said, it, it's four years of your life, so, you know, before, in pre-production, that's kind of the fun part where Matt mentioned a, a trip to Texas. We went on about seven of those, and we spent months in Texas during COVID and after COVID, which was nice for traveling, by the way. You know, literally the only person on the plane, that was pretty awesome. But, you know, um, just taking an environment, I drove around Texas, and so did Matt, probably seven times the entire state, just living in a, a SUV. Meeting people, going to small towns, giving stories, trying to find this, the backstory for these characters. What town are they from? Talking to people and just exploring every inch of Texas that you can. Some dangerous, some not, but taking photos just to try, try to recreate the world so that when you play our game, you're in Texas and not a video game. So, and that's not even to do with the characters. When we were creating the new characters, you know, Sissy and Johnny and another one that is not out yet. You know, one's a serial killer, which is Johnny. So we spent a year researching serial killers, and and Sissy's a cult member, and so we even went to some real life locations where either cult members had lived, um, or where, where a lot of killings had happened. And spoke to people who were close to it. We did a lot of research just on the characters, which no, people normally wouldn't do. We went to. I'm not going to drop the names of where we went. I don't want to publicly say where we went, but. Um, we did a lot of trespassing too. And, or, or contacting people in advance. But, here, but here's the here's the we're putting this into perspective for a lot of you of you people. When you make a movie, you have three months prep, maybe four months. If you're doing a huge movie, you might have six or seven months of prep. And then when you're shooting, I guarantee you the the amount of detail in terms of how long the grass is or where the leaves are. 
Like, when you're filming a movie, you just take what you can get. Yeah. Like, if it's cloudy that day, it's cloudy that day. That's right. You, and, and you have to be able to, you know, sort of land on your feet when you're making a movie. But, but you guys, like, I guarantee you, Toby Hooper probably didn't dissect the frame as much because you know when you're making a movie you have a whole team of people the set dressers come in and they put skeleton bones here and a lampshade here and they put a candle over over there whatever and that's part of the magic in making movies is that collaborative spirit of sometimes a mistake becomes one of the most interesting elements so the amount of time that these guys have dissecting which might have been a mistake. There could be something in the Texas Chainsaw game yeah. that was a mistake in the movie that makes it into the game that, you know, that shit happens all the time. Yeah, we, uh, we have to recreate the movie as well, too. So we can't, none of that exists when you create it virtually. Like in a movie, you can find, you can location scout, and you can find a house. And if that house is built, you may have to change it, dress it. But there's a real life location. When you make a video game, it's blank space. So we have to fill it in with every rock and blade of grass. So you have, we have to create the whole world, but also do it in a way that's authentic to the movie so that super nerds like us can't tell the difference. Oh, that's the wrong coffee can, or that's not the right flowers. Those aren't the right trees. And it shows. Things. You guys should be really yeah, proud of so yourself. That's the long, hard work is just recreating something that doesn't exist only on film. Right. That, that, that was a, a longer way to say the thing I was going to say. I was just going to make the point that we have to obsess over how long the grass is because when we start, there isn't any grass. There's nothing. Yeah. It's a grayscale room, you know? And it's, everything in it is things that we put there. So we have to know and do that with intent, yeah. which I think is, um, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting detail work and it's, it's, I, I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. But it also sometimes can be anxiety inducing because you're like, oh, we missed something, or yeah, shit, that corner. What was in that corner? I don't know what's in that corner. Well, they didn't show it, right? Blu rays on, and, and you're, you're frame by frame, and you're like, oh, there's nothing in that corner. Cool, that was hours of stress and worry over yeah. literally nothing. The, uh, you guys get to go back and fix that. Yeah. Like, if we're shooting a scene and then, like, somebody's standing on the blood tube. <laughs> and she's getting killed, and Kane's killing her. It happens all the fucking time. Yeah. If you're standing on the blood tube and you're pumping blood, and the director's like, "Why is there no blood?" And then the killer raises his foot, and all the blood sprays out and hits the ceiling and the wall on top of the again. And the camera, you're you're in trouble. So you know, and you just sometimes you just gotta go with it. And they're like, "Oh, we don't have time to do another take." So you guys actually can go in and finesse, so yeah. that's what, again, makes it great. We also got to create the bedrooms of the hitchhiker and the cook, because we never see those in the film. We got to recreate the rest of the house that you don't see in the film. We got to fill in the blanks. <laughs> Thankfully, can people talk or work with us on that and trusted us enough to take his characters that he created? And where does the cook sleep? Does he have a bed or a mattress? Right? He's kind of, he likes to keep himself clean. So he's, he sleeps on a, a bed, but the hitchhiker obviously sleeps on a dirty mattress filled with filth. So. We, we, we got to do that, right? And um, that's, that's what I'm sleeping on this yeah. weekend too. Hey, weird. It happens. Who is your Who is each of your guys' favorite character in the game? Yeah, it's like Julie is my girl. Just but, like, yeah, you know, uh, sort of what I hear. And and <laughs> Sissy is my favorite killer. Yeah. yeah, I think I would go with Connie because uh, I just like Connie. I like being able to walk. Quick, you know. We have people working. Sure. There's people lined up. Okay, we should, uh, we should do that. I, I can't see We're just going to keep them. talking. Yeah, I'll just ask your question and say your name. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm John. And hey, John. I, as a hardcore fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I really appreciate the attention to detail that you do and convey to, you know, the us nerves, it means a lot. Uh, my question is, uh, is there something in the 2003 movie remake that you thought was even a little better or unique than the original, or something that was lacking that you thought could have been better? I go by that house every time I'm in Texas. I make a trip just separately just to see that house, because I think location-wise, it's a perfect place. I love that they found that place. It took a lot of work. That house, to me, stands out as something that's very, very creepy. Every time I look at it, even in real life, people live there, by the way, and um, so you can't go trespassing. He clearly says that, by the way. <laughs> um, but it's a very interesting place, and those aren't easy just to find. You don't just accidentally find the perfect house. It takes a lot of work, as they can attest to when you're making a movie. Um, the rest of it, I think, 
I, I was a fan of it when it came out. I'm still a fan. I think it started the whole reboot, right? The whole line of, of horror reboots. Like, with, well, it came out before Friday 13, so it was one of the first ones. So it should give its credit for, for that, at, at least, you know. But I, I enjoy the film. Yeah, I, I, I love that movie. I think that um, there's a lot of great takeaways from it. But, you know, also we set out to create, you have to start with the original, that's like kind of where the the heart of that franchise belongs, so that 74 film. So, um, yeah, I don't really look at it that way, but in, in terms of how I feel about the 03 remake, I mean, you know, I, I think there's a lot of good that came from that, and it introduced a lot of really interesting characters, and, you know. It made Leatherface different, and yeah. kind of seen in a different kind of way, which we hadn't really seen, so I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, you guys probably know the process of motion capture, uh, being certainly different than being on a film because as a performer you have no makeup you have no wardrobe typically uh so it's a little strange when you first start doing it because you know i think it's fairly easy to bring violent rage for myself and often too too much off the set but anyway um it's just bizarre to wear spandex <laughs> and sensors all over. But what I didn't realize until we did the Friday game that, you know, I could stand on the motion capture stage, which is a, just kind of a grid work on the floor. And I could look at a monitor and see myself already animated live as the character, which I didn't know was a possibility. So now I could do some movements while watching the monitor and see if I liked what it looked like, what it was going to look like when it was fully animated. So that certainly helped. And then, you know, we did at times, I did wear a leather face mask, especially the lipstick one and stuff. And, um, and a chainsaw. Helps. And a chainsaw, yeah, a real chainsaw, which you know, until you tried to do the chainsaw dance with a real chainsaw and realize how fucking heavy that thing is when you're going above your head. I never appreciated Gunner's performance until I tried to That's do it. That's something you can only do at the end of long filming and you're pissed off. Which is what he did, right? Now you understand why it worked and why he did it because all the rage. Well, I, I have a funny story about Chainsaw 3 real quick talking about weight of chainsaw. So we made a, um, a fake out of Ken Foray because in the original cut of the movie, he gets killed uh, with the chainsaw. So we made a gelatin head, and we filled it with blood. And we wanted to do a test, but we didn't have a chainsaw. So we drove up the street in Chatsworth and rented a chainsaw. <laughs> and it was like 28 bucks, and I put like my driver's license on the counter, and I said, I'll be right back. We drove the k &B. the head was strapped on top of a dumpster, I put a leather face mask on and chainsawed it in half. And it looked great. And we filmed it. And then, of course, what I didn't think about was all the blood got sucked into the motor of the chainsaw. So it was all like, you know, caro syrup and food coloring and shit. So I wiped it off and then drove back to the place and said, here's your chainsaw. Grabbed my ID and just took off. So I was waiting for the next person to rent it going, there's blood dripping out of this chainsaw. <laughs> Some of the video footage of you running in, throwing a bloody chainsaw, and running out. They haven't solved that case yet. Okay. Yeah. Whose idea was it to put the saw his family on the boy? Uh, Dave Scow, I think. Dave Scow wrote that script. Uh, Next question, or is there two lines or just one? I'm sorry, we can't see. I think it's just one. Okay, okay. There's a lot of people online. Okay. Thank you. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Hi, my name is Raina, and I have a question. I know that the current Texas Chainsaw Massacre game is multiplayer, and you keep talking about all of the time and consideration you went into the setting and everything. I was wondering if you're ever going to have like a story mode. I'm going to be able to play it, and I don't want to have to rely on other people. Like, I just want to. Yeah, I understand. I, I would like that. Um, <laughs> Maybe, please. <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. 
it's, not, it's something we've thought about, obviously. The, the issue is, the reason we make multiplayer games is because when you're playing against other people, it changes the game dynamically and in real time, you're trying to outsmart another human. And that's what provides the variety and all the dynamic moments of, you can't tell what that character's gonna do because you don't know them. And, and sometimes you're playing against yourself when you switch sides, you're trying to outsmart yourself because you know what you did as a victim. So now as a family member, you're like, okay, I remember as a victim going over there, so maybe I'll go there. So you're in a constant battle of trying to outsmart people. Whereas if it's AI driven, um, there's only so much variety you can do there. So we wanted you and your friends to live through the Texas Chainsaw film or a Friday the 13th film. So a lot of our resources get devoted to that because for us it's hard to do both. Like on Friday we didn't have the single player challenges and obviously that's something we've thought about that I can say anything. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do appreciate the need for it and the want for it. And it's not lost on us. I, I, I can say that much. I'm just a lonely person, so... <laughs> I have to be by chase you around with a chainsaw. <laughs> Trust me, you won't be very lonely after that. I'm already bloody, yeah. so you can't miss me. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah, but step forward. We can't even see you. There you go. Oh, there you go. Hi. Oh, I But I see the Look, now you have a whole new room of friends. That's <laughs> right. Uh, All right, who's next? What's your name? What's your question? So my name is Patrick, and I was wondering if, as the game creators, you guys ever anticipated the world record challenge for how many times you can stab grandma. <laughs> <laughs> well, we oh. knew that was going to be a popular part because of the idea of, you know, we, we had the technical test and Peter didn't have their grandpa perks, which for anybody who hasn't played grandpa perks help you significantly in the match. Um, because players hadn't seen that, we knew that they weren't really motivated to stab grandpa, but we kind of knew that once that cat got out of the bag, people were going to be realizing how powerful they were, and therefore on the victim side wanting to de-level Grandpa. So, the world record stabbing of Grandpa, no, I don't, I don't think that we knew it would be quite yeah. that excessive, but... <laughs> we didn't know people would stab him and go 10 feet away and hide in the shadow and stab him again and just do it all day. And the family sat there and not speak at the dark shadows for some reason. I feel like a Wally Coyote skit or something. I do have a cool little bit here for you guys. Uh, some of you might know this already, but Kane actually has another mocap credit in Texas Chainsaw. He's, you're stabbing him. Yeah. He's Grandpa. Every time you stab Grandpa, you're stabbing Kane. Is that really what you want to do? Right? Yeah, we're on the stage. You remember that, right? I remember that day you were Grandpa. Yeah, he's in the chair and you're being... And my head is in the bucket. Yeah, that whole scene. <laughs> yeah, and you were kind of... Kane was like, wait, how do I do this? We're feeding, we're feeding we Kane's blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie says, uh, why don't you, why don't we have you play Grandpa too? And I said, yeah, right, okay. So, what do you really want me to do? Uh, grandpa. And, really? And, uh, and you have to suck on our finger. We're going to feed you blood. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, so. <laughs> uh, we got another question up yeah. there? Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I was just wondering, Yeah, that was something we obviously had to study for a long time because, you know, the camera's not always on the cook and the hitchhiker. They don't have their own films, right? So there's sprinkled in, in various moments of getting mad or the hitchhiker being crazy. Um, so we, we got two really talented people to, to do the, the motion capture. Sean Whalen, your buddy, does um, the hitchhiker. And Troy Burgess, who used to be a dancer and he spent time with, like, with Houston and all, he's an old school guy and he can still move. Um, he's very agile, but he's also an older guy, so he can do both. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of a lot of study in those two characters because we didn't want to just hire someone who didn't know the characters or to not do it justice. So um, that was they probably practiced for three or four months just trying to get the man and, uh, the mannerisms down, and, and then we practiced on mocap and then we shot in multiple takes. So it was a lot of fun, but I definitely wanted to get it right. I, I just want to give another quick shout out to everybody who did mocap because yeah. everybody that came in to do the mocap for this game knew the characters to an extent that, you know, it, anything that had source material, Sean studied Hitchhiker and that whole, you know, mold, but also with his experience from people under the stairs, he kind of had like a little bit of that. So he had the shifty good guy, he had to switch it to shifty bad guy. 
<laughs> and Troy, being a um, performing artist, um, he, he, he's used to studying how your body moves as a dancer, and so being able to recreate the cook was really And Christina, plays, Christina Klee plays Sissy, and I got in Doug Mir played Johnny, so they all just did that. And of course, the mother face here and, uh, and grandpa. But yeah. I didn't play anybody. <laughs> Not yet. I think I should kill Nicotero in uh, in the game somehow. I, but I can run like a motherfucker. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you better just have you ever seen any of my movies? Does that ever matter? If they I've, <laughs> I've worked on half of your movies. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. I know your tricks. <laughs> yeah, question. I think there's someone there. We can see. Yeah, I think there's a couple. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, my name is Carl, and my question is for Kane. I was wondering, because you did the most in capture for Leatherface, the movements, and how he ran, did you also do the squealing and grunting for Leatherface? Because I noticed that there was a lot of, because you guys went into so much detail that you also went for his, uh, like, concern noises and angry noises as well. Well, I did make a lot of noise. I, I, I didn't realize that was you, but he's an old buddy. Um, and, you know, whenever I play characters like this, whether it's mocap mo or film or whatever, I make a lot of noise, but whether it's used or not, I don't think it really it was. It was a voice actor named Lex Lee yeah. who actually did the grunting and all that, because it's four who, hours. Lex Lang. Lex, 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 Lex Lang. To grunt and do that for four hours straight, a scout can attest, doing VO, screaming in a booth for four hours, you lose your voice. And oh, yeah. So it's, it's very, very difficult. So shout out to Lex Lang. So. You have no idea. After that session of recording for Julie, in I think I did it two hours, I was so exhausted. I mean, you, you like, like you said, you get three months to film a movie, but imagine doing a whole fucking movie in two hours. It was so crazy. Oh my god, I was drained. She was, but she did great, so. I do have to note, it was a weird day when they did the Leatherface VO work, because like Ronnie said, it was hours of a person just grunting in a Big noises, <laughs> So the whole office is like, Wait, let's take some of your grunts. In the office, let me tell you. It was on a conference. Come on, game. Game. The Speakers are playing. And actors, the actors hate that part, too. I love it. You do? I love an ADR booth. I love See, it. See, we do, we've done a couple animated creep show episodes, and you know, you go through and you do all the, Kiefer did one of them, actually, and Danielle did one. You go through all the uh, all the voices and all that stuff, and at the end, the animator's like, okay, so we need what's called efforts. So it's like, you're walking up the steps. <laughs> and, and you start making all these noises. And I remember after about 30 seconds, Kiefer's like, yeah, I'm done. Do you need any more of this stuff? I'm like, no, he's good. You can. It's fine. But it's funny because it's not, they'll ask for all these different grunts and, I love it. and it sounds really. I just think it's so cool how people can create sounds, you know, like for movies and stuff. Like I always love like yeah, Universal totally Studios yeah. when you went to the special effects and you got to see yeah. like, how they create everything. every noise you hear. Oh, yeah. It's such a talent. I love it, it is a talent. Yeah. Like underappreciated one. Yeah. Luigi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can see Luigi. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, and this is the entity that, oh yeah, and this guy didn't protect the research, so, yeah. Um, so, um, I have, um, I presented you two questions, either, a, oh sorry, I'm going to close it, like, either a voice type question or a, a simple question, uh, what is your favorite game of all time? Do you have a favorite game of all time? Me, my favorite game of all time? Oh, yeah. Frogger. It's nerdy, Final Fantasy Tactics is my favorite game. Mario. I was the king of Frogger. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. So bad. Uh, I like Bioshock. I think Bioshock's kind of fun. Yes! Yeah. Oh. Nice. And by, by the way, Bioshock's a horror game. Anybody that tells you it's not... It's sci-fi horror. Okay. It's like Alien. Yeah, it's horror. I kind of like... Yeah, room, I, I, I kind of like Fallout. Two or three more questions. Oh, Fallout's yeah. great. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Quickly. You have a favorite game? It's a... Uh, Are you Mario. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. He's like... Thank you. Oh, no, Thank you. Really. We can hear you actually. You're doing good. Yeah. Oh, um, my name is Quinn, and my my question is: Will anything from the second movie ever be added into the game? Um, we currently have the rights to part one. Each film is separate rights. Um, of course, we want that. That was my question. You know, of course, we want everything, the whole franchise. If we had our choice, so just 
stay tuned? Yeah, short yeah. answer is we would like to have every movie represented in our game. Yeah. Um, we're fans like you guys are, but you know, there's things that go into that. And so yeah. uh, know, know that we're fighting for it, so. Yeah. This, yeah, the more popular the game gets, the more the people who are in charge of those movies see it. And so, yeah, we're definitely, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan. Um, kind of along those same lines. I was a huge fan of the Friday the 13th game. I Thank know you. at the end, got a little bureaucratic maybe, I might yeah. say. Were there any things that you learned to avoid that with Texas Chainsaw, or was it easier because, was it just an easier process? Because you know, Friday's sort of like a yeah. bureaucratic nightmare. It was definitely easier because it's just Ken people. We're just working with them. Yeah. Um, there, weren't, there weren't companies involved and multiple people. and. Um, so yeah, nothing's ever bulletproof, you know, like we couldn't have seen yeah. the lawsuit between Sean and Victor coming. There was nothing we could do to prevent that. That is happening. We were a casualty of that. But this time, of course, we took all of those lessons into this. And of course, Kim he was aware of that. We spoke to everyone well in advance. So yeah, it's just him this time. And, you know, he's been working with us every step of the way. So. <laughs> That's good, yeah. the, the law is there to protect screenwriters and um, help them clean properties and things like that. It's happened all over Harder, um, you know, Clive Barker and Hellraiser. Yeah. So working with Kim, the original writer, yeah. Texas Chainsaw. Kim's changed. not going to come to himself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Last one, I guess. Yeah. Ellie, I'm Danny, and my question is in regards to Grandpa's vocal cords. Oh, with having some strong vocal cords. That is, uh, what's funny is, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. That's awesome because, yeah, Grandpa, you know, this takes By the way, you look awesome. Yes. You look so cool. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Little chunk dog look. Yeah, chunk dog. Um, our game takes place four, five months before the film does. So it takes place in March, April. And um, the whole time we were developing, Grandpa was kind of stagnant. And he did some things, but we wanted to turn him into like the Eye of Sauron, kind of this big creature, even though he doesn't do that in the film. We, we made the gameplay decision and the creepy decision to make him scream. So yeah, he screams a little more than he would uh, in the movie, but it was pure gameplay driven. So that's I just, why. <laughs> I think it's funny that never before has that question ever been asked on this planet. I love it. About <laughs> yeah, Grandpa's vocal cords. And we appreciate the question too. There's some hard thing questions here. Um, I believe I'm the last one asking yeah. a question, um, but I love the TCM game, I love Good Interactive, I'm so happy to be here, my name is Lari. Quick question about the game. One, I love the cosmetics that have come out for the survivors, and the different skin for Leatherface. Um, I was wondering, are we gonna have some other cosmetics in the future? Uh, different model kind of skins, instead of different uh, colored outfits. Um, also for the killers as well. You know, well, you played Friday the 13th, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, that just answered it. <laughs> Here's the thing. That's okay. it. Yeah. Uh, um, the short answer is we would love to do a lot of things like that. And um, really what it comes down to is as long as folks like yourself are, are out there playing the game, we're going to continue doing what we can to make it interesting and cool for you guys. Uh, that being said, we don't have anything to reveal at this time, so stay tuned to all the, yes. the usual channels for that kind of, of stuff. Will yeah. you guys be having any events coming up for like holiday season or something like that? We have a series of events planned. We, you know, the, the, the situation with the game, again, similar to, to content, it's, it's really a matter of how far the community wants to run with it. And, and right now, we, we're lucky to have near 5 million people playing our video game and supporting it. And, and you know, those passionate fans are all over all of our channels. So um, we're going to keep doing what we do and, and try and bring you guys cool new shit to uh, enjoy a game for as long as we can. Is there a light switch in here, by the way, that we can actually turn the whole thing off? Let's flip them. Is there anyone? I don't think anyone is back there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just hanging out. Oh, yeah, I see someone there. Someone is there. The is there a light switch? They were murdered like an hour ago. <laughs> Great. I didn't There's do it. Someone hand on the light switch. Well, Kate was here in the entire I just want. Oh, God. Jason. Yeah, we've got to wrap it up. Uh, we have to go to the We have a table, but by the way, who has a birthday in February? Raise your hand. What's your birthday? February Leap year. Wait, I didn't. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's your birthday? Mine's a leap year. What is it? Seven. Yeah, actually, the seventh? Yep. Okay. Uh, who's October? Anybody? Oh, yeah, come up. Come up. You come here. Yeah, you want. <laughs> October? Okay. October what? You're the only. October. Go on. 
Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Fourteen. You got. Okay. Uh, August six. I mean, who, who lives in August? I changed it.